This was the scene three years ago today when a mob, violent mob instigated by a president who lost the 2020 and 2020 election steps of the Capitol and desecrated its hallowed halls. Theirs was a failed attempt to overturn the results of a free and fair election, a failed attempt to disrupt a sacred tradition that has made American democracy a model for the world for 248 years, the peaceful transfer of power. January 6, 2021 marked a new beginning a new fight in safeguarding the American experiment. I'm Jonathan Capehart. This is The Saturday Show. And here we are, three years after the insurrection, and we're still living with the consequences of that day, the persistent threats to our democracy. With Republican voters casting their first presidential primary ballots this month, and with Donald Trump continuing to hold a commanding lead, even expanding lead in the polls, we're faced with the possibility, the startling possibility, that the man impeached for inciting the rioters on January 6th could be elected again. The man who claimed the insurrectionists had love in their hearts, who referred to January 6th as a beautiful day, and who vowed to pardon the rioters criminally charged in connection with the violence, people he now calls hostages. Yesterday, in his first campaign speech of 2024, President Biden issued a warning about what's at stake. Trump began his 2024 campaign by glorifying the failed violent insurrectionist insurrection at our, on our Capitol. The guy who claims law and order sows lawlessness and disorder. Trump's not concerned about your future, I promise you. Trump is now promising a full-scale campaign of revenge and retribution, his words. This is the first national election since January 6th. Insurrection placed a dagger at the throat of American democracy since that moment. We all know who Donald Trump is. The question we have to answer is, who are we? The president is right. And the answer to that question for some, from some in the Republican Party is frightening. According to a new Washington Post University of Maryland poll, Republicans are now less likely to believe that insurrectionists were mostly violent and less likely to believe Trump bears responsibility than they were in 2021. That's an insult to the hundreds of men and women in law enforcement who fought valiantly before our eyes to uphold their oaths to serve and protect the Capitol against a mob incited by a commander in chief who violated his. In the, in the days and weeks following the insurrection, five officers died. Officer Brian Sicknick, Officer Jeffrey Smith, Officer Howard Liebengood, Officer Gunther Hashida, and Officer Kyle DeFreitag. More than 100 others were injured, leaving physical and emotional scars. Former D.C. Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fanone was there that day, there on the west front of the Capitol, battling the mob. He was dragged down the Capitol steps. He was tased by someone in the pro-Trump mob. He suffered a heart attack during the fighting. And in a detail that crystallizes the horror that unfolded on January 6th, Fanon recalls insurrectionists shouting, quote, kill him with his own gun. Despite having lived through that harrowing assault and living with the consequences of that trauma, Fonon has not stopped defending our democracy. He has sought to hold those responsible accountable, and he has an urgent message for the American people as the 2024 presidential campaign season gets underway. Fanon told HuffPost, quote, ultimately you, the American voter, will be the last line of defense when it comes to preserving democracy as we know it and ensuring the peaceful transfer of power. And it's that serious. Joining me now in studio is Michael Fanon, former D.C. Metropolitan Police Officer, Courage for America Council Member, and author of Hold the Line, The Insurrection and One Cop's Battle for America's Soul. Officer Fanon, I'm going to try to get through this. Um, thank you for what you did three years ago today. Um, please tell me your thoughts um, on this third anniversary. <clears throat> um, we are uh, still in the midst of the, the same fight that began 
uh, on January 6, 2021. Um, and we have a lot at, at stake in this country. Um, and I think that it deserves every American's attention. You know, uh, Donald Trump continues to defend the insurrectionists, as he did at a rally in Iowa last night. Listen to this. <clears throat> but those J6 hostages going to jail for 20 years and 18 years and 12, doctors, lawyers, carpenters, electricians, truck drivers, it's, it's one of the saddest things. It'll go down as one of the saddest things in the history of our country. And they went there to protest a rigged election. Officer of note, how damaging is it for Trump to label those um, violent riot rioters who were criminally charged and convicted uh, as hostages? The man who attacked you with that stun gun was sentenced to more than, than 12 years in prison. Correct. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about those individuals that received those lengthy sentences. They did so because, A, they engaged in an insurrection, uh, but their, their actions that day were violent. And that violence, <clears throat> excuse me, was directed towards law enforcement officers. Uh, and so, you know, I think it's clear that they deserve the sentences that they received. Uh, but by Donald Trump um, referring to them as hostages, uh, and uh, speaking about them sympathetically, uh, it, he's lending his authority as the former president to their actions. Uh, and he's telling Americans, his supporters, that um, I'm going to continue to support you and I'll do everything I can. And if I become president, I'll even pardon you uh, if you can commit acts of violence on my behalf. What's your response to Republicans, particularly those Republicans who responded to the Washington Post University of Maryland poll, who are you know, growing more sympathetic to the insurrectionists? Uh, I, I don't know what to, what to say to them. And, and quite frankly, I don't think there is anything to say. Um, they've made their decision. You know, we're three years out from the January 6th insurrection. Um, we had the benefit of a uh, bipartisan January 6th select committee investigation, which really rolled out um, the evidence supporting the fact that it was, in fact, an insurrection, that it was intentional, uh, and that it was pre-planned by Donald Trump and members of his administration. Um, if they can't uh, see the facts for what they are, then they have aligned themselves and, and become part of the MAGA insurrectionist Republican Party. Um, you've had a chance to speak with, with young voters, um, some of your travels are, are around the country. What, what did they tell you, or what do they tell you about the 2024 election? Do they view it as seriously as you do, you and I do? No. Uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to convince people, um, especially younger voters, who maybe didn't witness um, the January 6th attack uh, weren't, um, weren't old enough to fully appreciate what happened that day. And I mean, I, quite frankly, I don't think the, um, you know, the full story of that day has gotten out to, you know, each and every member of, uh, of the American population. Um, but they seem to think that, uh, other issues trump, uh, our democracy. <clears throat> uh, and, uh, I think, you know, like many voters in this country become disillusioned um, and, and don't see the um, significance of the 2024 election. Um, I wrote about your experience uh, on January 6th in an op-ed um, for The Post back in August of 2021. And we had never met, but you emailed me. <clears throat> Excuse me. You emailed me after it was published. I have it, I have it right here. And you, um, you wrote, just read your editorial. I can't thank you enough. Michael Fanone. Why did you send me that? Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, the editorial was titled um, Officer Fanone Deserves the Nation's Gratitude. Sadly, that's not always what he's gotten. Um, I mean, listen, I, I've got a pretty thick skin, uh, but at that particular time, um, I was dealing with a, a lot of uh, criticism, both external criticism from people I'd never met before in this country. Uh, who had absolutely no idea what my experience and the experience of hundreds of law enforcement officers really was. Uh, and I 
was receiving a lot of internal criticism from the police department, um, from my fellow or former colleagues who um, didn't understand my motivations for speaking out, um, couldn't see the fact that, um, that I was trying to get them acknowledgement, um, and it took its toll. And so having somebody like yourself write something uh, in a major publication um, that I believe, you know, here was someone who understood my motivations for, um, you know, for putting myself out there that way. It meant a lot. Um, it meant a lot. Um, you you told me um, in an, in an earlier conversation <clears throat> when I've had a chance to to interview you before um, that you actually have it framed in I your do. home. Yeah. I yep. mean, go ahead. No, I mean, it was that significant. Um, you know, there's been a lot of articles written about me um, that, uh, you know, some might say were, um, you know, more significant, but um, that's the only one I framed, so thank you. Um, please. Uh, the the uh, honor is mine. Um, Michael Fanone, thank you very much for coming to the Saturday show, but more importantly, thank you for your service. Thank you.